Joining our discussions today is the gentleman joining us via Zoom, uh, Professor Adeyinka Adeniji Samson, Associate Professor of International Relations, Department of Political Science and International Relations, University of Abuja. Good afternoon, Prof. Good afternoon, my brother. It's a pleasure to have you. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, First of all, Okay. First of all, we'd like to say congratulations to Liberia on this huge celebration. Then I would immediately like to ask you a question. Does Liberia have a lot to celebrate, or is this a moment of very deep, sober reflections? Oh, well, uh, it's, it's actually it's a thing of joy for Liberia to celebrate okay. you know, at this time. Now, if you look at a couple of years ago, in which Nigeria also was involved in settling the conflicts, you know, uh, the uh, civil war within the Liberia, you know, uh, country. And so I think it's called for celebration, you know, for them to have, you know, so many of the countries across in Africa that have issues like this, finally they able to settle their problem of Liberia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. To do that, and coupled with the fact that uh, they have consecutively had, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, transition smoothly mm. you know, between one government to another, you know, without any rank. Or I think it's worth you know celebrating, you know, a time like this. All right. Okay, it's worth celebrating. So let's move it a little deeper. Um, we just saw the history and the, the desire of the formation of Liberia, which was supposed to be a beacon of civilization, African civilization to the world, westernized, modernized African men returning to Africa to build a society where they are accepted and become a bright, shining light. From the very onset, there were issues between the locals who never left, who were never colonized, and those who returned from uh, Europe and America. Do you say that we have achieved the lofty ideals that was at the heart of the formation of Liberia? Or rather, to what extent have we achieved these ideals? And if not, why do we celebrate? Mm, you know, yeah. you know, Liberia is uh, such a wonderful country. You know, in the whole of Africa, I think it's only Ethiopia and yeah. Liberia that were not, you know, colonized, never colonized. Yes. You know, by uh, yeah, so, so, and who were the fathers? Uh, all of the people that, you know, were the only class in Liberia were people that came from, you know, America precisely. Mm -hmm. They called them American Liberians, you know. The American Liberians were actually uh, the one dominating, you know, the, the, the political, you know, terrain yes, they in were. Liberia. Yes, they were, they, they, they were dominating until uh, when, you know, Samuel Do, you know, Sergeant Do, you know, decided to. You know, stay the coup. You know, they have stayed the, you know, the, the dictatorial, uh, American Liberia, you know, leadership. Yeah. You know, at that time. So, and that was you know, what led to their unnecessary war that, you know, lost that caused the loss of several lives and you know, property, and several lives of other African countries also were involved. You know, that, you know, uh, uh, that civil war at that time. So, but nevertheless, you know, things uh, at least relatively stable in the country and. Uh, you know, uh, 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 it was celebrated. To be honest, if not for you know the the way and manner, you know, uh, it was handled. You know, it would have been a serious issue, and we actually had a fair fair share of the challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, many of them you know, moved down to all of our you know, all the fires of them. So the effect of that. You know, uh, contra draft conflict, you know, within the Liberia. A big trouble for the whole of, you know, the West Africa, if not beyond. And so yeah. I think, uh, whatever they all said and done, I think celebrating it will not be a bad idea, you know, as it will be this time. So I was saying, can you take us into it? Really boggles my mind why are people who uh, suffered oppression and um, segregation and all kinds of racism would come back and build a society that um, power and leadership is exclusive to them and not including others, which was very contrary to the very reason they set out from the shores of the countries they left to come back to Africa. You know, looking closely at things, Martha, you know, one would have thought 
thought that the one would have thought that you know the Liberia, you know, uh, returning from you know America would have been more humane than other people, you know, who who were alien, who were foreign, you know, to the people. And at, at least these people were black. They were blacks that were brought back, you know, from America and they were, you know, deposited, you know, in uh, Moravia. Yeah. And so when you look at that, what would have uh, you know thought of it that like, they would have been more, you know, uh humane and because they have the same color and everything like that. But you see, there's something about human nature. Okay. Human nature is usually selfish. And human nature many times segregates and they want to dominate the other. And that was what accounted for the fact that the American Liberia dominated the political, you know, arena of Liberia for over 100 years. You know, from sometimes 1860 to around 1980, you know, they were on the stage. They were, you know, uh, the one controlling or dominating, yeah. you know, the political terrain, yeah. you know, of the uh, Liberia through the American Liberia True Wing Party. You know, so they dominated them largely you know, and that was what actually brought about revolt. And that was what made other tribes, which were actually the majority. Mm -hmm. the, about the, 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 if you look at the American Liberia, they were about 2% of the population of America, I mean, of uh, Liberia. You know, we have the indigenous Liberia. We have people that came from Sudan. You know, some that came from Sudan and some other parts of Africa that actually back there, you know, especially during, you know, slave trade. Some yeah. of them ran away. Around to Liberia, you know, for, for cover. So many of them came together like that. So having, you know, this, you know, number of people and the kind of, you know, uh, the nature of the composition of the people there. So one should have thought that the 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 the, the those, you know, American Liberia will have been made and used as an opportunity to rally them and yeah. help them because they, some of them were united, you know, because of their relationship with the colonialists, with the, you know, the Westerner at that time. So one should, have, one should have think that oh, they would have you know come with that idea that they are developed mind to see how they will help you know to bring a society that will be egalitarian you know a society yeah. where everyone will have equal rights everyone Absolutely. will have a say Absolutely. and everyone will have you know a playground to operate and the best will be chosen but what do we see we saw dictatorial you know tendency from there and that was why if, if you notice you know consistently if not until when Shirley, you know, actually came to power, you know, after the, the civil war. If not that time, you could see that consistently they were going through a lot of dictatorship. Even when Doe came, you know, that was what he learned. Sergeant Doe, when he came in, you know, he, he was only, you know, as related with oppression, you yeah. know. And so when he came to what you know, one would have thought that, oh, since he's one of the indigenous people, he would have, been, he would have done better. But it wasn't, it was not better in any way. It all, you know, just business as usual. If I became worse on that, you know, it was a dictatorial dictatorial. And so that was why, you know, uh, 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 we saw the 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 the, 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 the tale of you know, Charles Taylor, you know, and other warlords actually rose against him. Eventually, was assassinated, you know, uh, and, and and you know, led to you know, the serious civil war that many African country, you know, have to you know uh, uh, pay. You know, daily for so so those right, are issues. If I might, so if I might interject, human nature. sorry, uh, Prof, if I might interject a bit on the issue of the assassination and the preceding civil war, can you take us through a bit through the journey of that, the the harrowing effect? Millions of people, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand Liberians lost, and that is a lot for a population of just about five million people. Can you take us through the journey of this thing? You know, the you know the civil war actually started. Know, sometimes it's nine ninety. Yes. You know, before that time, before that time, there were a lot of you know some you know skirmishes. You know, yes. uh, you know from the people there were a lot of revolts, a lot of agitation. Yes. But look to have a equal opportunity in our land. But you see, that was not you know too hard opportunity. It took over power. So when it took over power. So they were thinking that all of affair, they were expecting things to, you know, to be, you know, done differently from what it was, you know, or what it were. Or, you know, Samedo and, you know, 
uh, in that. No, no, no. About 20 soldiers were brought together, you know. So, so and it just seamlessly, you know, you know, and got through with the coup. So when they got there, you know, he also oppressed people. He also placed, this, you know, you know, indigenous, you know, uh, uh, divide, you know, okay. uh, and so because of that, if I you know this would have been better for us, it would have been an avenue to <laughs> to, to do things quite differently. The way they expected it. When just Hello? Hello? All right. Hello? So, you know, Chastillo, you know, uh, was also a, a, a... Hello? Hello, I can hear you. I can hear you. Hello, Professor. I can hear you. Chastel, all right. All right. All right. Let me move on. All right. You know, Chastillo was, you know, one of the people in Liberia who are you know, highly interested in you know the, the the political you know. Uh, All right, Prof. I, I think we're having a little break. So what? Okay. Okay. So, you know, okay. so um, Prof, I'm I'm gonna oh, let, let me ask. A, if I might interject a bit, you know, we, we, we've talked a bit about the fact that um, the disappointment of rulers taking over people who would have known better, who have suffered oppression themselves and dictatorship role, yeah. and when they get in, they are unable to yeah. do something better. This begs the yeah, question yes. that it's not only enough to suffer, yeah. we have to learn a new way. So, what can Liberians and Africa by extension do to learn? We already know this is not working. What can we do to adopt and learn and internalize better practices? Practices for democracy and for our society. What do we need to do? Now we know the suffering, but we don't know a better way. What can we do so we can progress? No, to be honest with you, now this what we're, what we're talking about on Liberia is not different from what we are seeing in most of African countries, you know, in recent time. Yes. Now you you, you notice that most you know the African country, African the African leaders either, you know, from one tribe or the other. And so when they get there, they also, they place their tribe, you know, above. So, and that is terrible. And that was what really led to the trouble in Rwanda. Rwanda the genocide was as a result of that also, between the, 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 the Tutsi and the Hutus. So you see that. But you see, how did Rwanda solve this problem? That way, the government came to power. Yeah. You know, he was one of the warlords. Yeah. So when he came to power, what did he do? First thing he did was to legislate that no longer uh, uh, will anyone be asked for uh, his, you know, uh, state of origin, origin or whatever, the likes of it. What you are Rwanda, you are Rwanda. So there's nothing about your tribe or your ethnic divide. And so the only solution to this, you know, uh, problem, you know, excruciating problem that we have in Africa is for Africa to think inward, to look inward, see. The colonialists have succeeded, succeeded in dividing and ruling us. That was a tactic they used, you know, when they were with us. Now, and our political leaders learned such, you know, uh, tactics also to perpetuate themselves in power. And so actually, if you look very deeply, you will see that most of the African country, most of the African citizens are suffering the same faith. Their faith are not different in any way. So you're but suggesting that we... All of them in this time, you belong to the tribe of the president. Hello? Yeah, so you're suggesting that we oh, told the line right. of take the example of the Rwandan example and, you know, uh, oh, approach yeah. it from a true nationhood, not a bunch of warrior tribes, but one nation with a, uh, with, with a final goal. So like Prof was saying, that we can decide to move forward from the shadow of colonization that has inflicted a lot of damage psychologically and culturally true across Africa. And we can move forward with one united country, forgetting our tribes, forgetting our creeds, and just forging an idea with the idea that was our various country. Join us same time next week for all for the same episode and uh, we would be doing our best to make your day a little bit better.